Can you beat Tomodachi Life in one day? What even is beating Tomodachi Life? Well, Tomodachi Life isn't really a game you beat, like Animal Crossing, but it's got credits that you can get to, so how do you get to that? Well, the credits roll when two Mii's have a kid, but as far as beating it goes, here's what I want to do. I want to unlock everything on the map, I want to partake in all playable activities, and I want to see the credits roll. Okay, now, what is one day? One day in game is the 24 hour period from 12 midnight to 11.59 PM. The game runs on real time, or, well, whatever time your 3S is set to. So, I'm gonna start in the morning and push through the whole day. I wanna see if you can start a game of Tomodachi Life in the morning, and see the credits roll before midnight. Let's see what happens. Okay, so booting up for the first time, it asks us for the date and time. Then after that, we give our island a name. You can change this later, but for some reason, I don't think I will. Now we have to make a me look-alike. This is sort of your insert on the island. It's not you, but it's your look-alike. They want you to make it look like you, so that's definitely what I did. Next up, we have all this info to fill out. What's our name, our last name, birthday, dick length. It all gives our look-alike some kind of identity. The nickname here is what other me's will refer to him as, while his full name will only be used in specific circumstances. Now we have the voice. I think when a lot of people first heard this, they were like, oh, they got Google Translate to voice the Miis. But I think it actually adds to the atmosphere of the game, and I can't imagine any other robot voice coming out of these Miis. You can customize how it sounds with some presets and then do the fine tuning with these sliders. Now, his personality. Just like real life, you use these squares to determine your personality. There are 16 different personality types, and they all interact with each other in unique ways. So here we are, move-in day. Peter lives in this hellish room and we get to meet him. So what's the gameplay here? Well, Islanders will have problems and you need to solve them. If Peter is hungry, then go to the store and buy Peter some pancakes. Why does this matter? Well, some places on the map can only be unlocked after solving a certain amount of problems. When you solve problems, you might get treasure and your me also gets experience points. Well, now Peter wants some company. Let's get him some friends. So I think my best bet here is to add islanders constantly. The more islanders there are, the more opportunities I get. The problem is, if all I do is add islanders, then I won't be solving problems. So I have to find a nice balance. Peter wants to meet her, and whenever two people meet, if they hit it off, you get a little sparkle. There's a lot to get done, and this game loves telling me things. Imagine what it would be like to have a baby. Who is this mystery person? Why is she three feet tall? Newsflash! The newsflash is the most annoying interruption of this game. Every single time something new opens up, there's a newsflash. I'd rather have a picture taken instantaneously. With Town Hall now open, we can add Islanders and some other trash. We can import Mii's from the Mii Maker, send and receive them, or even scan QR codes. But in this video, everything you see will be a proud creation of mine. When helping Mii's with problems, usually they want something dumb like food or water, but early on in the game, a few of them trigger special events. So Peter says he added a place place to the island where people can donate money to better ex-hamster. He just left it on the ground near some fountain. What a dingbat. He's lucky this isn't real. So occasionally, instead of problems, an islander will ask you for advice on becoming friends with someone. They may want to meet up with them, or sometimes they just might ask you about a relationship they're already in. Sometimes, their problems aren't even problems. They just want to know if you like drumsticks. They're fucking weird. When you visit a me for the first time, they give you a little one-sentence introduction to themselves that depends on what personality they have. So something worth mentioning is that sometimes you can tell what their problem is depending on what music is playing when you enter their room. In this case, I can tell he wants to eat. Why are they always so hungry? How do they live when I don't play? And then he gives me a fan. The clothing shop is open now, so we can look forward to wasting more money on shit our Mies won't like. There's nothing good here. Let's check out that donation box Peter put in town. So, once a day, all the islanders will swing by and donate some money to our island. The more Mies you have, the more money you get. I don't know where they're getting this money from, though. Well, now I regret checking the donations before making more Mies. I want to wring every penny out of them. Something I want to mention about Tomodachi Life. You're encouraged to make Mies of your friends and family. This is supposed to make it more relatable and interesting, but I find that it's more fun to make a world full of freaks and see what they do with each other. I'm trying to pace myself with creating Mies because if you mass produce them, then you won't get to appreciate all the little interactions you have with them, like Slender Man eating spaghetti. They all have something to say, and I don't want to miss out on hearing them. But pumping out Mies is required to get things moving, so I have to keep things moving. Holy fucking shit, Peter's in love. Okay, okay, this is an amazing sign. This is very early on in the game, and we already have someone in love. Peter and Lori have got to get together, or so help me God. He needs some advice on what to say and where to say it. At school? These people go to school? Where the fuck is the school? Okay, we'll do it at the school, I guess. We just gotta hope Lori goes for it, because sometimes they won't feel the same.
Fuck yeah, we did it. We got a couple. Now Peter leveled up, and he's all giddy. A lot of new things just opened up. There's a theme park now. There's also a park. Random stuff happens at the park. Usually it's just people barbecuing, but sometimes they take pictures or play frisbee. The cafe is just a cafe. Apparently there's hangouts there. They aren't scheduled though. We're gonna check out the theme park in a bit, so now I wanna go over what's left to unlock. The majority of this stuff is really easy and just requires that I make more Mies and solve more problems. The two I'm worried about are the houses and the campsite. The houses require that two Mies get married, and the campsite requires that you get a street pass tag. I have another 3DS and a copy of the game, but we'll get into that later. Now that Peter and Lori are in love, we just have to look forward to their marriage. Also, before we continue, I wanna bring up the obsession my islanders have with disposable cameras. Sometimes, it's like every other person wants one. Also, they can take pictures of monkeys. They're fucking weird. All right, what now? 3DS image share. Oh, so now I can share all the amazing pictures of my beautiful me's online. Well, let's check that out. I wonder how... Oh. I think the way I'm playing is a very different experience than how you're supposed to play. If you've never played Tomodachi Life, it really is a fun game. It's actually the sequel to a Japan-only DS game that has since gotten a fan translation, so maybe I'll check it out one day. Oh my god! Hats! Fucking hats! Incredible. They got hats. I also, out of nowhere, have to pick an export. The point of this is so when you get a street pass tag, you'll give them whatever your export is, and they'll give you whatever their export is. So it's like you're trading items. Let's activate street pass while we're at it too. Okay, now something else. The port has opened. This is just where we would go to get out street pass shit. By the way, here's your island address? What the fuck is this? Apparently, it's just so your island can be differentiated from other islands with the same name. Oh my god. Now, import wear. So, here is where we can buy any clothes that we've gotten through Street Pass, but we can also get clothes from Spot Pass. Every so often, Nintendo releases a new special piece of clothes. Jesus fucking Christ. Or not. Nintendo stopped doing new Spot Pass clothes a while ago, and the last one they released was this schoolgirl outfit. How kawaii. I'm starting to lose my mind. It's like this pattern of weird requests and solving gross problems, and then me greeting the latest freak in town. This has been the first hour, and after every few things I do, something unlocks. Interiors. Now we can decorate the inside of apartments. There's some really cool interiors, but they're all expensive as fuck. I can't afford any of this. I'm surprised it took this long, but sometimes a me will want to play a game with you. Some of the games take two seconds, like this one, and other games are full-on quizzes. If you win, you get the most soundboard audio of kids cheering. I'm convinced they put that in here ironically. There's no way that was a serious addition to the game. You also get to pick from three boxes for your prize. This is treasure. The point of treasure is pretty much just to sell it. Every treasure is worth something different, and the more expensive ones are less common. If you're a completionist, you'll try to collect them all, but if you don't give a shit, you'll just sell everything. This game is great at interrupting. Me News is now here. Twice a day, we'll get reports on islanders and random stuff that's going on. In our first report, it seems people are climbing things, like it's some kind of addiction. Then they always have people give their opinions on the story. What on earth is happening? These can honestly sometimes be hilarious. They're all randomly generated using prompts and filling in the blanks with me's and random objects that are in the game, so sometimes you get shit that's so dumb it's funny. That's really what makes this game as fun as it is. Because of all the random Mad Libs, auto-filled in type shit that happens, it can be fucking hilarious. So Slenderman here leveled up, and so I've given him the gift of music. And you know what that means. The concert hall is now open. Thank fucking god the game paused just to tell me that because I would have been lost otherwise. Probably I would have given up. Well, here we get to perform music with our islanders. There's a bunch of genres we can pick from, but we can only sing the things we've given to Mies. They all have their own unique music and lyrics, obviously, but you can customize all the lyrics and have the lines sync up. I think this is a great example of how the fun that comes out of this game is limited to how well you can express your own sense of humor. It's not really that interesting to listen to what the developers wrote. Well, maybe it is, but the replayability comes from your own creativity. When it comes to these songs, you can save the lyrics you wrote to a me, so you can always have them there when you want to listen to them. You can choose how many backup dancers there are, and if you cut it short, everyone just stops and the crowd murmurs. It's fucking funny. Another golden activity we can take part in is sneezing. 
Sometimes you gotta help an islander sneeze because they're all disgusting people. Fucking the rankings board is now open. Oh wait, fuck you. Also, the girl charm ranking is now open. Now all the misogynists on the island can contribute to something greater. Could you imagine if this was something real towns did? You can see a couple of different stats and more unlock as you play. Moving on. Something I'm thankful for every day is the modern technology that allows us to use profanity in this game. Without it, I wouldn't be able to express my full creativity. Speaking of gay sex, a big controversy when this game came out was its lack of same-sex marriage. You may even remember John Oliver doing a violently unfunny bit on it back in 2014. People were upset that you couldn't have any gay me couples. Well, I say you can, you just have to work with what you're given. With some creativity, you can have gay me's. The only issue is he'll have a dress on, so you gotta give him some new clothes as soon as he moves in so it works better. You can do the same thing with a female me, just vice versa. By the way, I wanna show this because it's fucking stupid. In one of the games you can play, it's this shadow quiz. You have to guess what item this is a shadow of, but for some food items, the shadow is just the plate because the actual food doesn't hang off the plate so you have no actual chance to guess what it is. This is stupid. How in the name of God would I know what this circle is? Alright, we're almost at the end of the first hour, so let's top it off with some Tomodachi quests at the theme park. It's like this little RPG, but requires no skill. It's always the same thing, and there's only three screens. At one point, you have to choose between left or right, and if you choose wrong, you have to fight an extra battle. In the end, if you beat the boss, you just get whatever it was. It's a fun distraction every now and then, but probably the most unfortunate time killer. There seems to be a lot of effort put into it, but not going the extra mile by making it procedurally generated like everything else just kind of ruins it. It's been one hour and a lot has happened. We unlocked almost the whole map and have a lot of islanders. My plan for the next hour is to pump out a bunch more Mii's and I hope that we can get some others in relationships. There's not much else I need to solve problems for, but I'm gonna keep at them so we can get to know them and push things along. The porn shop is now open. This is where we can sell those treasures we've been getting from our islanders. Well, now that we have a pawn shop, I think this is only fitting. Yep, there he is. There are now 10 shitheads on our island. They're celebrating in the lobby. Sometimes Mies will want to show you a funny face, and they all go by this script of changing certain face parts by size or location. If you have a Mii with a fucked face, it's much better. When it comes to leveling up Mies, any problem you solve gets them XP, but you can also rub their face like a dog. While I continue, I want to go over how relationships in this game work. You, as the player, have very little control over the relationships your Mies get into. You can decide whether they make friends in the first place because they'll always ask you before they meet someone. After two islanders become friends, you can't control what happens to them. They may get into fights and stop being friends, at which point you can have some control in helping them make up, but in general, you have no control over how their friendship is going. But when it comes to love, whether or not Mies fall in love is based on some background percentages. There's different likelinesses based on personality types, but when it comes to Mies getting married, a me popping the question is actually up to you. Here's another game we can play called Pixel Quiz. You have to guess what item is pixel. Usually these ones aren't too bad, but the pictures get harder with each one, so when the last picture is like 3x3 three three pixels big, you kinda have to just get lucky sometimes. As you discover more and more personalities, you can visit the main office of the building to see them all. As more and more Mies are created, you'll also have the option to move apartments around to make your own special order. Right now at the park, the barbecue has ended, so they have a camera set up. Here they actually use the camera to take pictures of us. It's kinda fun, this game has a lot of stuff in it that really uses the 3DS's features in fun ways, and they all add up to being fun. Another game we have here is the Mii Pixel Quiz. This requires you to know what the freaks you've made look like. If you make two Mii's that look similar, you would just be fucked. There's something else I'd like to bring up about the Mii's. While you get to choose their personalities, you can't actually control how they act socially. In social situations, Mii's always just act the same, but if you get creative, you can make them nihilists or get them to be paranoid. Not actually, but it's up to you to spice up their interactions. This one is just shadows of Mii's. Once again, it's easy to fuck yourself over if you have two Mii's with the same default height and weight. And you wouldn't know that until you've gotten one of these games. And it's not like you're gonna delete a me to avoid it, so you're screwed. Finally, something new. The compatibility tester can be used to show us how compatible Mies are. It'll tell you the likelihood of them falling in love or becoming friends. Their heads are glued to this real human body. Sometimes, when you have new islanders, it's fun to stop by and see what's going on. You can even see a relationship forecast to see when people will get into fights and stuff. Why do you have a sewing machine but you can't afford bread? Also, we're getting closer to Slenderman having gay sex. The tower is now here and we can participate in a new activity. 
quirky questions. What makes these questions so quirky? Well, your thoughts, of course. Basically, you get to pick from three prompts and then fill in the last word with whatever you want. Whether or not a me raises their hand has nothing to do with what you put in. It's always just random and it's just supposed to get you to raise your eyebrow. This is another horseshit game where you could just be fucked. What do you think it is? It's an item and it's zoomed in. Depending on your options, you could just be screwed. How in the mother of fuck should I know what this is? These me's are fucking idiots. When creating a me, you're limited to what you have in the me maker, so if you want additional facial features, you'll have to get a bit creative. Next up, we have Judgment Bay, and this is just flipping a coin. This takes place at the beach, and you get two to four squares where you can write or draw something in them. The me's vote, and you can tap on them to have them share their opinions. The next game to encounter is the memory game. This is literally just a memory game, but with islanders and items. Okay, so this about wraps up hour two, but before we move on, we gain access to the popularity ranking. So let's see who's popular. Slenderman is taking the lead, it looks like. I believe this is determined by how many friendships they have and the quality of each of them. Going forward, there's a few things I want to focus on. There's really very little left on the map, so I'm going to continue to grow X Hamster's population and solve problems. In the meantime, I have my other 3DS set up with Street Pass, so I'm going to have that in the background. I'm a bit nervous. Peter and Lori are the only me's that are dating and their relationship hasn't progressed. Also, honestly, I'm going insane. My eyes hurt and these me's all piss me off. Most of them are assholes and a few good ones won't fall in love. Regardless, I'm gonna keep pushing and suffering. I need to know if you can beat Tomodachi Life in one day. I cannot find it in me to take this game seriously anymore. My brain is just mush and I have no respect for how the developers intended this to be played. If you lose a game, you always either get toilet paper or tissues. I want everyone to be evil. If I can't get what I want, I will give all these me's a terrible existence. So help me God, I will fill this island with living garbage. Now that we have enough me's, the apartment building has expanded to house more. The islanders may be excited, but I'm only giving birth to evil people now. My new goal is to fill this place with negativity. It's the only thing keeping me going. It's few and far between new things happening. Here we've unlocked the photo studio. It's exactly what you think. Here we can take pictures of me's. You can do a group, a couple, or the whole island. You can mess with the order and change their expressions. If you had two me's with a baby, you could do a family photo. So, I'm gonna be honest. I've hit a wall. At this point, I just have to wait for Peter and Lori's relationship to progress or my street pass to go off, but neither are happening for some reason. This has been the past hour. So I took a break. There's no point in me just playing non-stop so I put the 3DS down for a bit and now I'm back. But nothing has happened. No street pass, no fucking, no nothing. These lazy fucking idiots won't do anything. They're all just sitting on their asses wasting my time. I've just been messing with them. I've noticed that a lot of them are giving me medicine. I don't know why. Maybe they're warning me. In the meantime, I've messed with some of the items I've gotten. I also gave some stuff to Mies. At this point in the day, the mystery bag is for sale at the theme park, and it's a great way to waste 50 bucks and give us three random items. You could get something really cool, or a tomato. Certain things only go on at certain points of the day, so it's nice to take part of them when they come around. It's the guys hanging out at the cafe right now, and I've never watched a more awkward conversation. These two fucking suck. They all follow fill-it-in prompts like the news stories. So for every funny moment there is, there are ten moments that make no goddamn sense. And if one of them has an awful voice, forget it. Let's go shopping for funny hats. Rich sucks, and Paul clearly hates his fucking guts. This is like some alien torture that humans just can't understand yet. This actually goes on forever. This is like a precursor to all those AI-generated TV shows you see being streamed on Twitch and YouTube now. I've been hearing strange voices coming from Case Nexus apartment. I am losing my mind, and I can't stand this. There's a reason you're not supposed to beat this in one day. If you play this for like an hour a day, you'll probably remain a normal person, or as normal as you were when you started playing. But having played for almost four hours now, I'm going insane. I'm turning what was once a fairly weird island into the product of an insane person. What's that? Do I have something on my face? You got some popcorn there. What? Since when do I have a voice? What the fuck? I would like to see Rich die. I'm gonna put that out there. These games are fun if you play them once a day. 
If you play these constantly, you'll hate yourself. Football is just tap the screen really fast the game. Now we have to put our knowledge of Islanders to the test. Do I know my Islanders? Probably not. I've made like 40 of them in the past 3 hours. This is the hardest one for me because I hate most of these people and I haven't spent that much time with them. For a lot of these, it's not really a question of are they wearing the same clothes, but rather have I given them both clothes yet. When I do birthdays and personalities, I pick random shit. I don't know if two people were born in the same month. There have been very few me's I actually put effort into and paid attention while making them. The majority of these just look like dingbats. So earlier I mentioned how everyone on the island is obsessed with disposable cameras? Well, it's not very often that I have one because most of these people keep giving me medicine and toilet paper instead of anything actually interesting. So this here is a very rare occurrence where somebody wants a disposable camera and I actually have one. If you have them take a picture of someone, it'll be a me or two doing some activity. I don't know why, but Pot looks like her ribs are breaking in this image. I'll have to save that. As hour 4 comes to a close, I'd like to remind you again, this game is great, but don't play it like this. If you're willing to do a little bit every day, then you'll have a blast, but doing what I'm doing will make you want to die. It's nighttime here on Axe Island and nothing is happening. I'm miserable. I've been doing this all day. There's only so much I can take. Only so many times I can buy food and clothes and play football. I want to see this island burn. After having done this all day, I've realized some things. Peter and Lori are not going to fall in love and get married and have a baby all in the same day. It's not going to happen. And to unlock the campground, I need another islander to send me a traveling kid. Then they can sleep at my campground. While it's possible to do that today with a copy of the game with a kid on it, I have to wait for my Mies to have a baby and then wait even longer for the me to grow up just so I can send it to someone else's island. And that's impossible to do in one day. So I'm sorry to say, but but it isn't gonna happen. You cannot beat Tomodachi life in the course of one day. But wait, what if I time travel? If I mess with the system clock, can I move things along and beat the game in one real life day? Maybe, so why not give it a shot? The game warns us about the time being different. Yeah, I know, I'm cheating. So now it's the next morning and fucking nothing. It's actually Stretch Mark's birthday today, so I'm really glad we got to see that. There aren't any donations also. Hmm, I wonder why. I'm back to making more islanders, just killing time. I feel a bit more motivation to keep going now, but I will always hate everyone on this island. What's weird though, is that despite this being the next morning in the game, everyone seems the same. Like everyone who was friends yesterday is still friends. No one got into fights or anything. I feel like I'm ruining these games for myself. Like they will never be fun again. Sometimes it feels like the voices are pretty limited. And when you have so many me's, it's hard to tell them apart by their voices. Early on in the game, maybe you can tell them apart by their voices, but eventually you you just get to a point where it's harder to tell them apart. I hope if a sequel to this game is ever made, they increase the amount of customization you can do with the voices. That would make caring about individuals a lot easier and make certain people more memorable. I can't believe it took this long, but we got our first dream. Dreams are like problems, but you don't actually have to solve anything. As soon as you leave them, they're over, and you always get something from them that has to do with the dream. If they were just daydreaming, they'll wake up after it's over. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. I'm trying to kill time while things happen in the background, but I'm not too sure how much is happening. It's hard to keep busy when nothing seems to be happening anymore. So I'm gonna try to go deeper in time. I'm skipping ahead another day and still nothing. I just don't get it. Peter's relationship status isn't changing at all. I'm going insane, just fuck already. When you view the dream of a me who's sleeping, things are a bit different. While they'll only have one dream for you to see still, they won't wake up after you leave it. You'll still get some item though. You can also draw on their face like an asshole. It doesn't stay or anything, but it's a fun distraction when you get the chance. Still nothing, so let's go even further to the next morning. Here the morning market is open and... Paul is selling mac and cheese. Peter is still the same and I'm gonna scream. I can't keep doing this and there's nothing I can do about it. No matter how much I interact with either of them, nothing will change. How many more things can I give people? How many more me's can I create? Nothing is happening. I can just keep going further and further into the future and still nothing will happen. Why? The only new stuff I'm seeing is whatever weird stuff is going on at that moment. With all these different times I'm going to, I can see some different activity stuff. This has been hour 6 of me trying to beat this game and I just don't know. Nothing is changing and I'm not progressing. I keep leveling up me's and collecting treasure, but the fact is, 
The relationships they all have aren't changing with each day I skip ahead, and I feel like there may be a reason for that. I'm trying to take this seriously, but I mean it in all honesty that my sanity is becoming dirt. Okay, I can't. This is ridiculous. I've gone days into the future and still nothing. If you can't imagine what's coming up, it's more of the same, so I'm gonna give you a little highlight reel of the nothing that happened for the next hour. You scared the hiccups right out of me. I did not. The population on Chanster Island has reached 30. I am a whore. I don't really know much about this kind of character. Fuck. Yeah. I'm hungry. Hey, cop. Miserable. Darn, I lost it. Who often gets mistaken for lawless shit? Who has no interest in Garbaflee Vidaka? Who would rather be dead? Me. I'd like to have a disposable camera. I'd like to have a disposable camera. I need to express my satisfaction. I'm a convicted murderer. I try to always stay positive and keep a smile on my face. Very yes. Ding dong's the name. I like to think big and dream even bigger. There's a crab on your sleeve. Could you please take care of that for me? I'm miserable. I'm usually pretty happy just doing my own thing. Oh my god, something happened. The pampered ranking is now unlocked. It just shows who I do shit for the most. Basically, whose dick I'm sucking. Apparently, I'm a fan of Peter, Slenderman, and Twat. And I just can't stand hairy ass. Oh my god, I can't do this. Anyway, back to the real. I caught a cold. I don't feel so good. How's the weather out there? I lost something really important. Can you see if anyone's found it? Look what I found. You found it. I can't believe this. I just... I can't thank you enough. A new Gunktic Cream Puff Massage has been taking spots by storm. The Gunktic Massage hits pressure points that other methods just can't reach. Finally, it's about time. It's... It's a habanero. I wonder which one I should flip. Th I did it. This one? Th I did it. I'll try this one and... Th I did it. I'll try this one and... Th I did it. This one. I did it. This one. This I did it. I want to be friends with Chug Fucker. I'm Paul McCartney and I have the bump. I'm so close to burning my eyes out, I'm actually nauseous. I'm not sure if I have any creativity left or if it's all become what I can only describe as brain mush. It's been 7 hours and whenever you take a screenshot by the way, the game freezes for like 30 hours. Fucking stupid. If I keep doing this, I'm gonna die. This is awful and I hate this. Peter and Lori won't get married and the relationship is stuck at totally in love. It's not just them, it's everyone. Nobody will progress the relationships and it's driving me mad. I'm skipping ahead months now, and guess what? Fucking nothing. Absolutely nothing. Not a shred of anything. Just nothing. There's 38 islanders now, and honestly, if you gave me a gun and 38 bullets, I would shoot myself 38 times. This is in no way fun, and in all ways torture. Watching these idiots be idiots has ceased being funny and has become fuel to my hate of everything. Fuck all of them. I'll hate them forever. Even if they give me what I want, I'll always want them all dead. Despite my many attempts to move things along, nothing I can do works. So I've come to a conclusion. After playing this game for 8 hours now, I've come to my conclusion. No, you cannot beat Tomodachi Life in one day, and here's why. The game runs on real time, yes, but the game keeps track of 24 hour increments. That's why every time I changed the date, the donations didn't reopen at the fountain, and it's why relationships didn't progress. Relationships change with actual uncontrollable days, and no matter how far into the future you go, you can't force them to progress. I'm sad to say, but I've tried my best. What are we 
waste of time. In the end, Dirky Poo and Rango had some good vitality, but Tupperware and IE people just couldn't stick with it. Slenderman and Twat were pretty popular, but Nipplebarf and Titwank just couldn't climb the charts. Lori was the popular girl in town, and Ding Dong didn't bring much to the table. The whole way through, Peter held a special place in my heart, but Thick Dick can rot in hell. Overall, this has been an experience. Some games aren't meant to be beaten one day, and it shows. For as much as Tomodachi Life has going for it, what it's got going is best experienced over a long period of time. Trying to get through it all in one day would be against the point of it. Creating islanders and solving their problems allows you to create a special bond with people who may not be real, but are real in your imagination. For example, Miserable may not be real, but he's an entity that this game hosts from my imagination. Even with what I showed you today, there's still a lot more to see, and much of it is locked behind your ability to come up with it. I think this game will be remembered as timeless because of how it adapts to your own sense of humor. The things your memes say and the way they look and sound all require your input, so as long as you're willing to share your personality with this game, it will give you something you can enjoy. So, even if it wasn't giving me what I wanted, it gave me exactly what it was supposed to. And for that, I can't complain. I'm Bearman, and I've been wasting your time. Thank you for watching. Is it that on this fairy island there's a rock that looks like a screw? Apparently touching it after sneezing flies will grant you eternal happiness and free wishes. I finally decided what to do with my life. I'm going to be a famous pop star. I believe in you, Trot.